Hi everyone, it's Neve here and welcome to my art journaling channel. Today we're doing some collage and some crazy backgrounds and all the things I love using in my journal. So starting off in my large Dina Wakely journal, um, using some rainbow colours in the background. So I'm going in, how I usually would do um, a sort of page like this, or pages when I'm not really thinking. I work in threes, I tend to use a rainbow of colours, I'm not really thinking, I'm just sort of putting colours down. Because I am only putting out a little bit of paint and I'm painting it out until it's all dry, it is fairly thin and it is drying quite quickly. So I am able to put colours next to each other and they're not mixing up all that much. If you find that you're getting some colour mixing, depending on whether it bothers you or not, just sort of dry your layers as you go along and then you won't get the colours mixing. I'm not too concerned that it's, um, you know, a little bit patchy because I'm going to be doing, I knew I was going to be doing stuff over the top of it. So, um, yeah, there's lots of ways you can hide that. You can stencil over the top of it, you can draw over the top of it. I'm going to put collage over the top of it. So I'm not particularly concerned about the, the harsh edges. The reason I use the, the three colours is just really easy for me to remember. Um, it gives me sort of some of those visual triangles on the page uh, and you know puts a bit of interest. So I'm using a little bit of a ghosting technique here. You notice I put some um, paint over the top, painted it out, overlapped my layers, then put my stencil down and um, wiped away the extra paint. Now this paint is um, a fluid uh, acrylic so um, it's much more runny as you can see there. Um, it's much more translucent as it goes on and I'm still deliberately overlapping my layers. So I've overlapped the yellow with the uh, um, blue, so I overlap um, blends together. When you're rubbing the um, extra paint away, it's really important that you have a wet wipe that's damp but not too damp so you don't want lots of water in it sometimes um, that will actually make your paint run underneath your stencil so you do want it to um, have a little bit of dampness obviously to remove the paint but you don't want it to be really really wet so you can sort of see I've got a bit of a you know interest happening in my background there now in the um, video you can't really see sort of the yellow too much but in the close-up um, when it was um, finished you'll be able to see that. I decided once I'd done my background that I was actually only going to work on one page and quite often when I do pages like this I'll make the decisions I go along so I'll do the two backgrounds it just means I've got another background for another day that I can work on. Quite often when I do magazine collage like this um, I will use some sort of border in this case I have used a um, washi tape but um, I might hand draw the border in or do something like that. So I found this really cool image. This is part of the Australian um, Public Health campaign for vaccinations. They used all sorts of Australian animals. Um, so there's a koala looking like Rosie the Riveter with her, his, her arm out um, with a patch on. There's um, this one, um, there was a cockatoo I think and there's some others but it was a really striking image. Um, they were in all, all, uh, quite a lot of our magazines. There's some free materials posted out to people and it was in um, some newspapers as well. Um, <clears throat> so I wanted to use something large and visual on this page and I thought the really crazy background combined with this kind of crazy image worked well together. Now once I've finished gluing it down, I've gone around the edge with the um, black paint pens. So that just again pops everything out of the background, gives it a bit of a shadow, um, makes it all sort of um, stand out from that really really busy background. The other piece that I've glued on there were other um, bits and pieces I pulled uh, cut out from the documents that I was sent. Um, was it? junk oh, it's kind of like junk mail I don't know <laughs> uh, all those bits and pieces that you got sent so it's all sort of on the same thing and I've just sort of cut it out together so when I 
had finished that, I wanted to put a bit of a quote on the top of the page and I wanted to do some journaling at the bottom of a page. And no matter what you think about it all, this is a moment in time. So I wanted to journal about how it made me feel um, and what I was thinking about it and what my, my feelings were about it. So um, that's what I chose to do. So I've got, it's up to all of us. Um, and then I did some journaling about it below. With my journaling, when I'm using it, I use my paint pen. I write the letters out first, um, quite thin, and then once I've got the spacing of that, I go back in and extend my letters and make sure that it sort of fills in the space. So that's how I tend to plan it. The reason I do that is I'm a bit heavy handed with pencil. When I use my, per not my permanent markers, my paint pens, because my layers underneath are permanent paint, they're used with acrylic. If I made a spelling mistake, for example, which happens, you know, occasionally, I can then just wipe it away really, really easily. So quite often I will draw my own lines when I do something like this, but this is a journaling stencil set from Dark Room Door and I just really liked it. So if you like the look of this, but you, you know, need some help to make the lines um, there are some stencils available I know um, bullet journaling often has sort of stencils like this too that you can sort of use to do really cool different patterns and so on on your page so with my magazine collages like this I tend to have a larger focal quote or title up the top or down the side and then I tend to put my writing on my page in some sort of lines like I'm doing right now. When I write in these I write, I extend my letters to the very top and bottom of the lines and write quite close together so it is readable but from a distance it looks more like pattern in the background and I know currently on screen it's a bit hard to read what I'm writing but you can sort of see that blue going across the page. So it gives you that pattern of blue happening across the page. Um, I find it a really good way to, you know, if I want to write lots, but, you know, I want to blend it in a little bit, that's the way I tend to do it. Now I am just finishing off. I decided I want to add a little bit of the turquoise into the top as well as having it down the bottom. So I've made the letters up the top into sort of my key letters and I'm just putting little dots in them as well. So, you know, just because you think you've finished doing something doesn't mean you can't go back and add something afterwards to um, blend it all in together. Because I'm still adding. So there you go, you can see my journaling in the background. You can see that really cool image. You can see how the lettering up the top all plays together. This can be done in any, any magazine image, it can be a solid piece like this or it could be one that you make up. So just have a go, have a go at making the background, playing around with making a border and then popping some collage and some text on the top. Thank you so much for watching, until next time, bye for now.